So this might seem like a completely normal Asus Dual RX 580. And for the most part, that's true until you look at the display outs. You'll notice that we have quite a few display outs missing, and that's because this is a mining edition model of the RX 580. These were made around 2017 or 2020 during the mining crazes, and they're definitely interesting to say the least. As far as I'm aware, they're completely just completely normal RX 580s. And the only differentiating factor is that they don't have any display outs besides the DVI-D. Now these do come with a custom mining BIOS. However, you can flash a completely normal RX 580 BIOS on these and essentially turn it into a normal RX 580, aside from the ports, obviously. But that brings into question, would this be worth it if you can find it for super cheap? And is the display out limitation worth it? Before I installed this into my computer, it was a bit dirty. So I went ahead and cleaned it off and, and the paste, the thermal paste was a little crusty. So I had to replace that too. It was a quick and dirty little cleanup, but it was it did the job, okay? After I installed it in my system, I went ahead and put in the display adapter. Now, I will say this is quite a cheap adapter. I got it for Amazon. It was like two bucks. I would probably advise buying a more expensive adapter for reasons I'm about to get into. But this just got the job done. It got me a video out signal, and that's all I really cared about. But went ahead and installed it. I was greeted by a weird site. So everything looked really off. Like the display scaling was really weird and like not correct at all. So I went to the display scale settings and it was at 1440p which is my monitor's resolution but it just didn't look anything like it i figured it was just some sort of weird you know thing i need to install drivers for a gpu so i went ahead installed the drivers and after that it went to normal but it's only able to go up to 1080p at 60 hertz now i know for a fact that dvid if it's a dual link one supports up to 1080p 144 hertz or 120 hertz i believe it's 144 but for whatever reason it just wasn't having it and i'm going to assume that it's because of this cheap adapter that's why i was saying i would recommend it a buy just something a bit more expensive, at least more expensive than $2, just so you have the full refresh rate and resolution support. But for the sake of testing, it didn't really mean much, so I went ahead and just used it anyways. Now, something about this GPU is that the idle temps are really good. I saw it get down to as low as 20 Celsius, which is just, I don't know if that's abnormal or not for a 580, but I know that other GPUs I've worked with in the past just haven't gotten that low. So I don't, I don't know. It's interesting to see. But beyond the idle temps, I went ahead and put it into Furmark. I wanted to see how, you know, stability temps were under full load and temps were great i didn't even see it get to 70 celsius which is pretty good for full load you know stress test i was pretty happy with it and i, I think that repasting it definitely probably helped i didn't test it before i repasted it but i would say that the repasting probably helped out a little bit but in terms of just actual gaming performance it performs just like a 580 i played some resident Evil 4 remake on it and on the balance preset i got 50 to 60 fps at 1080p which i think is pretty fair for what i paid for it which was 30 bucks now aside from the obvious drawback of lack of display outs i think that this can be an enticing option for maybe a super budget system that you aren't going to be using a lot of monitors on or maybe something for your you know a kid it also depends on the actual price and i do believe that almost any product has a right price if it's cheap enough and i think if you're paying around the 25 to 30 dollar range it's generally okay just keep in mind you have to factor in the cost of an extra adapter something a little nicer than a two dollar adapter and you also have to take the time to clean and repaste it to make sure everything is looking decent and there's no dust in the way of the airflow additionally sometimes with these mining gpus you will have to flash a normal bios on them because sometimes the seller doesn't take the time to you know flash a normal 580 bios on them keep that in mind but overall i would say that given the limitations but also the affordability i think that this is not the worst thing to buy if you're on a an extremely tight budget and maybe you want to you know resell this later on or maybe you're not a super picky person maybe you just want to use one mod or, or maybe you have some kids that want to play some minecraft or roblox like this is a pretty cheap price for what is a still decently capable card with 8 gigabytes of VRAM. So I think that overall it's fine. I wouldn't say buy any mining GPU all willy nilly. I would definitely look at pictures of it, make sure the miner took care of it, and maybe request that the miner flash a you know normal 580 BIOS to it. Anyways, thank you for watching this video. Hope you guys enjoyed it, and hopefully give you guys some interesting information about how a mining card could potentially be your next cheap gaming GPU. Anyways, I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye. Thank you for watching.